I'm here with uh, Ellie Steinman and Chesson Meisel, the uh, writers and director of Love Virtually. I suppose I'll start with, this is a strange movie. <laughs> and I, I kind of loved it. I don't even know where to start. Where, where did the idea, or how did this movie get going? Because it's so strange that I can't, I, I'm trying to see who looks at this uh, script and goes, yeah, we'll make that because it seems so odd. And and fun movies like that don't typically get made. Right. So, so the I'll answer the I'll answer the the second question, then I'll let Cheston take the first question, uh, or the uh, the second observation, and then you can take the first question. Yeah, it, the script was very odd. There wasn't really any gatekeeping in order to make it. I mean, this was like a home movie. We made it our like completely ourselves. There was no asking permission or like, what do you think of it? It was just kind of like, all right, we have a script. Let's let's just go shoot it you know, in a combination of houses and basements. And, and so, yeah, it really was just like a small little indie project that we did ourselves. So, um, yeah, I don't think any studio or any production company would have made it if we had sent out the script. It was just like, a, let's just do it ourselves. Um, and then the the origin of it, Chesson, do you want to take the... Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's one thing I like to say is necessity is the mother of invention. So when you look at something like this, you know, we had, it was about a month into COVID. Um, Ellie was in uh, in Florida at the time I was in LA and we started talking and he, you know, he was itching to make a movie and we started brainstorming. And, but when we started brainstorming the parameters for what can you make um, without a huge amount of money and what can you make during a global pandemic? At that time, we didn't know what was gonna be possible. We didn't know if it was gonna be six months, a year of lockdown, we didn't know if Hollywood would open, we didn't know if we we're going to be filming this on Zoom screens and with iPhones or if we're going to actually be able to do real production, which thank God we were able to. Fortunately, uh, things opened up enough, but we we're still shot under crazy conditions. So we set out to write something that could be filmed with no more than two people in a room at any time. There were a couple scenes that were filmed a year and a half later that had multiple people in it, but the original script that was part of it. And, you know, once we kind of got into these absurd relationships that are online, which lends itself to this kind of thing, Ellie was insistent that all these couples have to come together. But how do they all come together? The only way they could all come together would be in VR or in a Zoom chat or something like that. So ultimately, all sort of the bizarre aspects really born out of the fact and the limitations that COVID created and our anticipation of how could we fit something around the impossibility of making a movie at that time. One of my favorite kind of threads, because this cast kind of like a Magnolia sort of thing where you got a bunch of different stories yeah. that all come together. Um, I, I would also say that, uh, hey, what if Ready Player One was good? Um, but <laughs> you have uh, uh, Sherry O'Terry and Steve Tobolowski's story reminded me of a certain song, and I really love how that played together. Is that uh, is, would that be the inspiration of that whole thing? Um, you know, it's funny. I, I I've definitely heard that you know talked about the Pina Colada song. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I def I've definitely like heard it. It's it's an iconic song. I don't think it occurred to me that that's what that song was about until after we shot this, and the people were like, oh, it's like the Pina Colada song. I was like. Is that what that song is about? And uh, so it wasn't necessarily like a direct inspiration, but yeah, it's it's exactly like it's 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 ripped from that from uh, from that idea. Yeah, but the, I think there's more to uh, there's a little more to like yes, but what is that idea in today's world? And it's exactly. a matter of like people get into relationships and you get into sort of like patterns and habits in your relationships. You don't really see who's in front of you. And, you know, you're, you're connecting on a certain level, but you're connecting based on, you know, all the baggage that's built up and things like that, as opposed to necessarily what is there between two people. And sometimes you have to take away all the things that, um, you know, we've kind of get stuck with in order to see maybe the, the connection was there all along. And, and, and that's kind of, you know, uh, uh, one of the themes in the movie is like, what, how do we connect and, and, and what is real connection, especially when technology enters the mix? Yeah, and and I think you uh, explored that quite well, along with all the other storylines. What, what's kind of the writing process between the two of you as you're going through this? Like, do you just have like a broad idea of the of the certain thread, and how, how can what if this happened? What if this happened? Or like, how, how do you add ideas, and what what do you take from that? Like that that might be too much, or not work, or however that works. 
it evolved a bit, but it really was. I don't remember what was the first. The first one was like the sandbagging story. Yeah, yeah the, the first, first one was the, the idea of the reverse catfish because I just that seemed very like funny and absurd that like beautiful people would make themselves not so attractive so as not to be you know desired for superficial reasons. Um, and and I just thought you know that was kind of we just really kind of looking at the absurdity of things and that seemed like it was an interesting story but that wasn't enough to make the whole movie. So then we're like, okay, well, what about this other absurd aspect? And some of these storylines came from headlines, which were before their time. I remember reading a, an article about a woman who was attaching an emotional connection to a chatbot. And that was before now with AI, the way it is with ChatGPT. These were like very rudimentary ones. Um, but, you know, it, but, you know it, it was something that was actually starting to happen. And so I think we just drew from those things and then really talked through each of the storylines and figured out what the connective tissue could be. And, you know, there's, we're riding across the country from one another using online tools. It was very much a uh, writing process for today's day and age. Yeah. And what about like, um, this is a comedy, how much, like, I mean, the, the one part that stands out is, Oh, I'm going to smash that like button. Like is stuff like that on the page or is there uh, some latitude for just kind of coming up with actors coming up with stuff on the on the spot um a combination i think i'm gonna smash that like button was in the script i think might not yeah have been. that was yeah, one yeah, yeah that was but a lot of the ones were um, the stuff that uh roddy played by peter gilroy a lot of his stuff and that was one of the reasons i i, I wanted to hire him um he ad-libbed a ton so a lot of his a lot of his stuff is ad libbed. Sherry and Steven did some ad libbing, but a lot of that stuff was on the, you know, a lot of their stuff was on the page. It, it was all pretty like tightly structured, uh, and we, you know, the process was more like, all right, let's get everything on the page. Aside from Peter, who kind of like really did his own thing, which made it very challenging in the edit because everyone's shooting up against blank screens essentially and working off of performances that are shot weeks apart so that was challenging kind of cutting it together but for the most part um yeah we, we stuck to the script and then would do like ad lib takes after the fact to see if we, we got some gold but yeah we wanted to keep the structure pretty tight for the most part you just like uh you just shoot it like let's just shoot how it's written and then we'll ground yeah, it and then, or... and, then, and then let's play let's, let's let's do one where it's just let's you know I wanted to give actors an opportunity to do that. Some took advantage of that. Some were like, "This works. Let's let's keep it." But yeah, there's a, there's definitely there's definitely some ad libbing ad libbing in there uh, throughout the movie. And what about like the special effects? Because like there's a lot of animation in this, obviously, given the what the movie's about. But it's also an indie movie, so like, what kind of challenges did you guys have with that? Because I imagine there'd be more than one challenge it presented to you. I was going to say the animation, we kind of figured out how to put together with bubblegum and band-aids ourselves and then find someone who could actually make it look good. Um, so we actually were, I, I had Ellie in my basement in a uh, mocap suit and I'm, ha you know, messing around on a computer, not knowing what I'm doing, but somehow we managed to animate at least the initial 30 something uh, animated scenes. And we found some great guys who helped you know, help really clean it up and make it look good. But in terms of the VFX shot outside shots outside of the animation, there were like 600 shots, one VFX artist who worked on it for a couple over two years. It was really a mom pop kind of a, a production. Oh, wow. So who, who is this? Uh, who is this warrior? <laughs> because that, that, that sounds O'Donnell. insane. Ken O'Donnell. Yeah, he was the, the MVP. He put in a lot of a lot of hours. There was there was a ton a ton of VFX in there, a lot of hidden VFX also just with screen in terms of screen replacements. And I mean, there's just so much stuff in there, but yeah, it was one guy. <laughs> Basically the, a lot of the characters in this are avatars. So you can definitely get away with like, you don't need Pixar level animation or Star Wars right. level animation. It's like, oh, it's a bit janky. Well, yeah, they're avatars. They're supposed yeah. to look like that. Uh, did did all, any of that come into writing this? Yeah, I mean, we even kind of, we, we knew that we weren't going to be able to do Pixar level animation. So even when we brought on, you know, the animation company to take the animation we had done and sort of do the cinematography and clean it up and do some of the facial stuff, you know, we were like, go ahead and lean into some of the janky stuff because it was supposed to be the metaverse and the metaverse may be a little bit better than it was three years ago, but it wasn't, you know, but it wasn't intended to be some believable reality somewhere else. It was supposed to be a believable trip into the metaverse. And, and I'm hoping that we managed to pull that off, especially when you see that we use some 
stock Mixamo characters and we did stuff we created ourselves. Some of them look better than others. And there was kind of a diversity of the way things look. But I think that's kind of how the metaverse, you know, at least in its current iteration is, is that there's different quality avatars and, you know, some move better than others. And, and I think that, you know, we tried to at least lean into that as being a reflection of what that experience is. So hopefully, it, you know, hopefully it sells. I'll end on this. Uh, we have a what's in the box segment and we have people put movies in the box that they think are underseen or maybe it's personal to them or they just think is really good and no one talks about. Is there a movie each of you would like to put in the box? A movie I'd like to put in the box. It's a good question. Um, I really like Cha Cha Real Smooth. That was that came out. Yeah, I like to plug like you know, indie filmmakers. Who, well, he's not. An, I mean, he's like. I mean, he blew up. But yeah, <laughs> I thought that movie was great, and I I love the entrepreneurial spirit of it. So I'm gonna plug that one. All right, and Chesson. You know, I don't really. Uh, the truth is, Ellie's the movie buff. I don't know that I have anything to put in the box that's underseen or underappreciated. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bring back a really old movie that everyone should have seen. And if they haven't, because it's generationally a lot of people didn't. A month before we made this, we uh, had, and, and really I think inspired us and in setting us the moment. We had a viewing in my basement of Airplane, and oh. um, the, and and you know that's an old classic that you know maybe the younger generation hasn't seen. We showed my uh, we showed my oldest uh, son the film, and I, I think that kind of actually got us thinking in terms of the absurdist genre and satire and things like that. So you know it was it, it, I think it was part of the inspiration for making this film. So for that reason, uh, even though it's not you know, unseen, maybe it should be seen again. Also, uh, speaking of which, uh, Chesson, I was looking at your IMDb and you have a movie or OHR. And I was looking for that. I cannot find that. Is there a place that that online that that can be found or do you just have to stumble across it at a DVD store? No, no, it's currently not on any of the platforms. Uh, maybe we'll consider putting it back out. It was in several film festivals. It's it's a it's a documentary, very moving documentary, which Ellie also helped out with in a great way. Perhaps it'll we'll we'll, find, we'll put it out on platforms, but we haven't done that as of yet. Now it's just privately. If you want to, if you reach out to me otherwise, I'll, I'll I can send you a link and you can watch it privately. Oh, but it's not available to the public. Yeah, I'm, de- I'm definitely down with that. One thing that will be available is Love Virtually on digital and on demand, November 7th. I really enjoyed the movie and congratulations to Thank both you. of you. I cannot wait to see uh, more that you do because this was very inventive and very fun to watch. Thanks so Thank much. You. Thank you so much.